what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Tony Horton, Baby Einstein, founder Julie Clark, um, Atari founder, and many, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today's episode, I'm gonna, this is gonna be a little bit different episode actually today. Um, I had an amazing entrepreneur, and he actually invited me to interview him uh, for his podcast, and it was so good. I said, can you, please let me release this on mine. Today's episode is brought to you by um, Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. At Rise25, we help B2B businesses connect their Dream 100 clients and referral partners, and we help you run your podcast so it generates ROI. Um, you know, as people have listened, if you've listened to this before, podcasting is much more personal to me and it was inspired by my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor and him and his brother were concentration camps in Nazi Germany and were the only members to survive. But his legacy lives on because the Holocaust Foundation did an interview with him, which you can watch on my about page. So yes, podcasting will help your business. It's been the best thing for my business and my life in general, but it helps you and your guests leave a legacy. So if you have questions, um, I believe you know any business should have a podcast. So if you have questions, you can email us support at rise25media.com or learn more, go to rise25.com. John and I made a video and we even left in the outtakes. So now check out today's episode. Dr. Scott Gray here, host of Top Minds, where we bring on top minds in healthcare, life, and business. And I've got Jeremy Weiss here, who has done thousands of interviews with successful people in healthcare and business, and we flip the script, and he'll be interviewing me today. Dr. Scott, thank you for having me. I want to take a quick second to introduce you. If you don't know Dr. Scott, he's the founder of several healthcare businesses, including Regenerative Health Centers, Gray Marketing Enterprises, where basically he helps patients connect with healthcare offices all over the U.S. They've connected over 100,000 patients to the perfect doctors in their area over the last 15 years. And the episode is brought to you by gmedigital.com. It's Gray Marketing Enterprises. And basically what they do is they completely run your healthcare business marketing to drive more patients to you so you can focus on providing the best care. So if you thought, you know, how can I see more of the perfect patients who need our help? I want to focus in on the patient care contact them. They're experts at that. You can email support at gmedigital.com with any questions or go to gmedigital.com. You can learn more and you know, there's, you check out more episodes of the podcast, but there's a video where Dr. Scott goes over transforming your practice into an unstoppable business. And they're the exact methods he's used for, for many of his health centers and for other uh, companies. So Dr. Scott, you know, the first question I have, there was, there's a really kind of impactful story and we'll get into your journey a little bit, and this is going to be a very interesting conversation. But um, there was an impactful story of a patient uh, and how yeah, you got so into this, you know, regenerative medicine space. Definitely. So, you know, I, I had a chiropractic practice for, you know, 13 years, and I had this patient, uh, his name was Bill, and uh, Bill came to us with back pain, I was having uh, pretty severe back pain. And he was just one of those cases that I, I just couldn't make any uh, headway with. And he, you know, he was very diligent getting his adjustments, doing exercises, all those things. And uh, it just got to the point where uh, a, a friend of mine, a neighbor of mine is an orthopedic surgeon, uh, an amazing, amazing surgeon. And uh, I said, Bill, I think you need to go uh, see this doctor and uh, uh, see him. And I, I think, you know, I've tried everything in my toolbox, you know, the, this is it. And the, this is the next step. So he did that. And, uh, you know, back surgery is one of those things that uh, it's difficult, no matter who you are, it's even the best surgeons, you know, it's not perfect. Right. And what is in healthcare, but you know, with surgery, there's a lot of risk involved. And when Bill went and did this, uh, unfortunately, his surgery did not go like we wanted it, not, did not go as planned. And um, what I found out later, I actually literally saw him at the store in, the, in a parking lot at the grocery store. And he was telling me that what had happened with the surgery and uh, literally couldn't work anymore. 
uh, his disability uh, that he got wouldn't cover his bills. And I mean, it was a real downward spiral for him losing his home and all these different things. And I'm just thinking of the, the impact that that had on him. And a lot of times we don't see those things. We don't see the full story. And that just really impacted me realizing that, man, is there something else out there? And I started to hear more and more stories like that. And I, I just wanted to figure out a way that I could do something. And, you know, it wasn't until uh, October of 2015, uh, I met a uh, gentleman who introduced me into the world of uh, stem cell therapy. And all of a sudden, I started to see this new world of and not just stem cells, but regenerative medicine, the, the whole gamut of uh, what regenerative medicine covers and what it can do. And uh, this opened a whole new world for me. Now, being a chiropractor, I thought to myself, well, I can't do this, right? This is an injection. It's a totally different process. And uh, I, I really wanted to be involved with this somehow. Uh, I had studied under a medical doctor in Florida to see what was going on with his patients and how it was working. And I just was blown away by it. So I wanted to figure out how can I do this? How can I make this happen that I can't let it stop me that I, I can't do the procedure myself. And I said, you know what? Um, I, I thought I had this epiphany of, well, how do hospitals run, right? Hospitals hire the best doctors and the best nurses and nurse practitioners to take care of the patients. And so I thought to myself, well, that's great. I could hire the best clinicians to do the work and I could be kind of like the, the storyteller, the, the ambassador that goes out to, to talk about this and share these stories and the message of what uh, regenerative medicine could do. And that's really what launched this whole thing for me uh, into building the clinics that I have. And it's been you know, all about finding the best docs and nurses and uh, team that we can to deliver this care um, there's a lot of people will see that I'm involved with it and say, what's a chiropractor doing with regenerative medicine? And, you know, I, I'm just the ambassador. I'm just the, sometimes we'll say CEO, the chief education officer. And, uh, I just want to get the message out and, uh, let our clinicians do, uh, their thing that they're best at. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause I mean, there's, there's hospital administrators, right. And they're not, they don't have necessarily, they haven't treated patients before. I mean, obviously you have, but what's a case, Dr. Scott, that sticks out that really impacted you when you, you know, maybe it's a personal case um, of a patient or maybe you saw the power of the regenerative medicine um, that you thought, I need to be involved in this. Well, um, specifically a lady that uh, was down in, in uh, Florida and she was actually there getting her other knee done. And this lady was scheduled for uh, knee surgery, for total knee replacement. And uh, she came back and she was telling us that, you know, she had pretty much thrown in the towel and she was going to go get her knee replaced and found out about this, found this doctor and gave this thing uh, a shot. And uh, no pun intended there on that, but yeah. gave it a shot. She... <laughs> Um, got this done and she was walking normal. Her pain was gone. And uh, I mean, this was just a few months down the road. Uh, so she was coming back to get the other one done because she wanted to feel that literally the one that was bad started to feel so much better than just her one that really wasn't bothered. All of a sudden she started to realize like, oh, this other one isn't the best either. So she got the other one done. But uh, that's when I'm like, wow, total knee replacement this lady was going to get a total knee replacement and this one treatment that they did was able to prevent that from happening. And when I go back and think about Bill and I think about what the risk of surgery and, you know, I, I don't have anything against surgeons. They do amazing work, but you know, if we can try less invasive first, let's do that. And then if it ends up needing to go to surgery, uh, there's that. Cause what we do isn't perfect either. Right. But um, it, it's an amazing treatment that yeah. we can do before going the surgical route. I'm sure people are wondering this and obviously, you know, not all outcomes are, are the same. So uh, there's probably a disclaimer there, but um, this particular case is definitely motivating. What treatment did she get? 
So she got just a uh, stem cell injection. So uh, these stem cells are taken from the umbilical cord. So just to get that out of the way, uh, right. you know, we don't use embryonic, uh, you know, all the things that were the controversial uh, stem cells. First of all, they're illegal in the U.S. Uh, second of all, I wouldn't even use those uh, just from personal beliefs uh, if they were available. But there are hospitals that what they do is uh, they'll actually do informed consent, strict informed consent uh, with ladies that are having babies. Uh, and if they, they just tell them, say, hey, you can, you know, keep your stem cells for yourself. And a lot of people have probably heard of that. You can cryopreserve them yourself so that uh, your family can use them uh, in need of stem cell therapy or stem cell treatments. Uh, you can throw it away or you can donate it so that it can be used uh, by someone like this uh, lady who had it done uh, on her knees. So there's, uh, that's how the cells are collected right there at the hospital. They're literally at the, the lab that processes them within 24 hours. And all the labs are overseen by the AATB, the American Association of Tissue Banks. So just like they oversee uh, you know, a liver transplant or, you know, a heart, you know, those types of things, they make sure that they follow the yeah. good manufacturing It's just not process. someone scooping it into like a cup and like bring it somewhere. So. No, exactly. And that's a lot of people think, you know, is this like a wild, wild west type of thing? And no, the, the FDA goes into these labs, right? And the FDA has shut labs down that aren't doing it right, right? And that, that was a big part of our process was vetting the labs, going and finding, I, I've gone to every lab I've used, I've been inside the lab, I've seen their FDA paperwork. You know, we go in and make sure, and I'll tell you, probably 98% of docs who are doing regenerative medicine probably haven't been to the lab. Uh, I, probably, I thought that yeah, was- Probably even higher, like 99.9. .9. It could yeah. be, yeah, and I, you know, I, I feel that if I'm gonna, you know, in my clinics that I'm part of, that our doctors are doing these injections, I want to know what's going in there. I want to know exactly, you know, what's the third party testing saying? You know, what is in there? Is it going through the sterility test that we need? And so we have, uh, I literally just traveled around uh, all over the country to go to these labs. And if they wouldn't let us come to the lab, we didn't use their product. Uh, so we, we made sure that we knew the quality was there. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see more and more labs uh, shut down by the uh, FDA because they're not doing things right. And we're always just, you know, making sure that we're using the ones that the FDA uh, and the American Association of Tissue Banks are saying they're good, they're doing it right. That's, that's what we look for. Yeah. So you see this happen to this lady, right? And remarkable from total new replacement potential to her knee is doing amazing. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about the mechanism a little bit, but I want to hear about, so what did you decide to do next as far as your own personal situation and getting more involved? Yeah. So, I mean, really what I did was I, I went back to uh, Ohio and I, I found a medical doctor that would work with us. I found a nurse practitioner that could do this. Uh, we went and we trained uh, to you know, learn all the procedures, the protocols, all those types of things. And then I started getting the message out. I started sharing it with my patients from my chiropractic office and saying, Hey, you know, if you're interested in this or want to learn more about it, we just started doing educational seminars. And in that, uh, we started getting people who wanted to do it, wanted to try it. And, uh, just like with those patients, we started to see some amazing, amazing results. There's a guy named Les that I'll remember forever. And we got so many uh, referrals because of this guy's change. I mean, he, he could barely get from our reception area into the room, which was about 10 or 12 steps, right? He was so hunched over and in so much pain that you know, he, could, he could barely get around. And uh, honestly, this was a tough one. I actually called, you know, I, I talked to my mentor to find out, said, look, you know, as a chiropractor, I'm used to adjusting the spine. I'm used to doing, you know, all the physical therapy exercises, balancing lower cross syndrome and all these different things. And I started to doubt myself and say, you know, this is my really team going to be able to help this guy with a shot with, you know, just one shot. It, it literally didn't compute to me yet 
like you said, the mechanism and what actually happened and how this would, would heal. And so he had to say, you know, he took me through it, took me through it and said, look, you know, you're still, you'll still want to do physical therapy so that they get that longer lasting result. But believe me, this is going to help them where they can actually do the therapy, right? So that they can, you know, feel better. So we did this. And I mean, within days, he was standing up, walking around, getting around. You know, he was telling us like he, he was able to become an entrepreneur again. He had basically lost his business, wasn't able to uh, be physical like he needed to for his type of business, started his business back up. And his neighbors are seeing him outside because he, he likes to spend a lot of time outside gardening and things. And uh, they're just coming over and saying, what in the world happened to you? How are you standing up? And so that just started to spread around and we started to get a lot of people and the word just kind of spread from there. So uh, and stuff like that that just sticks in my mind of, uh, you know, the, why this is so fulfilling and, and so mm-hmm. great. And like you said, I mean, we have to give that, disclaimer i don't i don't want people to think this is some kind of magic bullet and then like you know that happens every single time it doesn't but um that just cases like that where you're like man this is this is why i do this and uh, this is what makes it fun so how do how do you explain because it is amazing um one shot in the like this guy had a lifetime you know a buildup of stuff going on what's the mechanism what's going on that you don't have to go into the full science of it, but just for people listening, how does it, how does it work? So, you know, one of the things that we have to be um, very clear about with stem cell therapy, stem cells and regenerative medicine, uh, we don't even really call it stem cell therapy anymore because it's not really about the stem cells. And here's what I mean by that is that we, we have to be very clear that what we're doing is really a tissue transplant. We're taking tissue from the umbilical cord that's loaded with stem cells, but it's loaded with, uh, it's, it's loaded with uh, all these different things like cytokines and proteins and exosomes and all, all these different things inside that are amazing things in the body that can heal. But really all we can do, because we're not treating any diseases, right? If you say I've got osteoarthritis, I'm not treating someone necessarily yeah. for osteoarthritis. You know, a special like concoction for osteoarthritis is just the same, mm-hmm. same concoction. Yeah. And what we're really doing is, you know, osteoarthritis is a decrease in joint space, right? So what we're doing is we're putting a tissue in the joint space that will provide cushion and support and viscosity in there so that that area can heal again, Right. It, it just happens that the tissue is loaded with all those great things in it that, you know, can do some amazing things. But what we're doing is we're putting in that tissue so that it cushions and supports that joint, gets viscosity so that joint can heal the way that it does. And, you know, we always talk about the power that made the body is the power that heals the body. You know, when you get a cut in your hand or your finger, uh, just the other day, I, I dropped my phone and I cracked the screen. And when I picked it up, I got a, a shard of uh, glass in my finger, unfortunately, and it started bleeding. My, and my little girls were looking at it. And then, you know, two days later, they said, Hey, let me see where you cut your finger. And I showed it to them and it was gone. And they're like, how'd that happen? And I got to actually explain to them, you know, your body heals itself. It's always regenerating. It's always trying to do it. And so when we put that cushion and support in with this tissue and basically just like think of it like a tissue transplant that goes in there, it helps the body heal and rejuvenate just the way that it does it. Your body does it on its own when we can provide that cushion and support in that area. So how does this now transition? You said now you start your own regenerative clinics, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So what happens next in this journey? Because you went from chiropractic office to what's next? So that, then I started the regenerative office there, kind of like in conjunction, uh, in the same office as, as the uh, chiropractic office, just you know, different side of it, different, different business and everything. Uh, hired the team, started training the team on how to do everything. Like I said, I can't do anything, so I'm not really needed, so to speak, uh, except for 
uh, you know, I would do talks and things to talk about what it's all about. But the, the doctors and nurses you know, did all the diagnosing and all that treatments and things. So I built that up and it was going well. And uh, I, I went to this seminar where uh, this guy and get to, on a little personal note, uh, this guy named Kent Clothier was talking about, uh, he has this phrase, he says, the time is now. The time is now. Why do we wait to do things? In our life and he talked about wanting to move to San Diego uh, he was on a plane that almost crashed filled up with smoke uh, thought he was gonna lose his family thought he'd never see his family again and that really shook him as it would anyone right and so he he started to think and he talked to his wife after they they did this emergency landing and everything and he was okay and said you know let's let's go we want to move to San Diego let's do it let's stop waiting we don't know what what's next and we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring right and so um i started to think about that and that really impacted me my wife and i have always wanted to move to florida and we said let's and do it you were in ohio cold i ohio. was in ohio yeah yep. no, we had never moved away um now i've moved over going to school and doing preceptorships and different things like that but my wife had never moved away she had always been in ohio and so this was a big jump for us and you know i had the clinic back and I had sold the chiropractic office and I had the regenerative office going. And so I didn't need to be there. We had a great team running it. And so we moved uh, to Florida. And while down there, I said, you know what? I could start one here. I could, you know, find some docs that would be interested in this. And so I started talking to some different docs about it. And lo and behold, I, I found some uh, folks down here that wanted to do it. And they really wanted to grow this. They believed in it. They, they loved the concept. They loved uh, what stem cells were doing. I showed them some testimonials of our patients and they said, yes, let th this is awesome. Let's do this. So we started doing it and uh, we, we grew that. And I say we, I, I basically gave them a system and they did it. They, they were and are so amazing. Uh, you know, we built it up to eight or nine offices uh, kind of along the west coast of Florida, uh, did that, and uh, just continued to you know expand out there. And uh, then I teamed up with some folks that wanted to start out on the west coast, and so we started offices in uh, Henderson, out by Las Vegas. We started Scottsdale, Arizona. We started Denver, Colorado, and so I've just been really working to help doctors reach more people through regenerative medicine. I'm just kind of a catalyst, right? To, to help get it going and more of the, hey, here's the system to run the business. Think of me like, everyone talks about McDonald's systems, right? And how to run things. I, I'm kind of like that guy. And then they're the ones in there uh, doing it, making that system work, making that system run and helping as many patients as possible. And uh, I, it's a funny thing I always tell people, with what I've been able to do with Ohio and uh, Florida and these other areas. And I, I help other docs as well. I actually train docs in these systems that aren't even part of my clinics. And, you know, the day that I decided that I was going to stop seeing patients in my chiropractic clinic was a big day for me. That was a very hard thing to do. But what I always say is that I realized I had to stop seeing patients to help more patients. I, I realized I had a bigger impact really that I needed to make. And so I had to step back and say, where do I really belong? Where do I really fit in this thing? And how can I do this 10 times as big, 100 times as big and help more people? And that's where all this started. And uh, honestly, I didn't plan that I would have all these offices. I didn't know what it would look like. It was, I just took the next step, right? Took the next step, took the next step, prayed about it, believed that, you know, we'd be taken care of with, with, with whatever we did. And uh, it's been great. And it, don't get me wrong, there, there's been some ups and downs. It's, it's tough growing businesses from scratch. Uh, this has not been uh, all sunshine and, and roses and all that fun stuff, right? Uh, and rainbows. But uh, it's been a fun journey and we're helping way more people than we ever would have. Mm -hmm. And that's, 
like you mentioned, you know, with gray marketing, connecting 100,000 people to uh, doctors, that's what we do, whether it's in my clinics or other clinics. Um, you know, when people need to find doctors that are doing it right, they vetted their labs, they're using a good product, you know, we want to be the ones to help people find the best doc in their area. And so, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's where our offices are or not, we know docs all over the country. I mean, this has been, this has kind of been my life. You know, I'm, I'm in this thing, you know, underwater in this whole regenerative world. So, yeah. Um, yeah um, Dr. Scott, anyone who knows you knows you're being very humble with, yeah, I just gave them the systems and they made it work. But you know, the reality is um, it's not a build it and they come you, one of your superpowers is marketing. Okay. And so, I want to shed a little light on the marketing piece because you use various degrees of marketing to drive those people. You know, you're more of a, more than a chief education officer. I mean, you're sort of a CM, a full CMO suite for some of these other offices. So I want to hear about how that came about because you're growing your own clinics. Um, then were people coming to you and saying, Hey, I want you to do this for me. Cause you, you help do this for other clinics, not just ones that you own. Right. And so, yeah, that kind of started as friends coming to me saying, Hey, I see that, you know, you do all this marketing. Could you do that for me? And so just started branching out, helping friends and doing this thing. And, you know, it's, there's people that consult and coach and do things like that. And it's always nice to be able to, you know, help people give them information and you never, can you really gauge what that does, you know, with someone. And I, you know, I, I've got a lot of consultants. I've got three coaches that I use and I could tell you what revenue they've done for me. But when you're a marketing company, I mean, it's either you perform or you don't, right? You either get them results or you don't. So it was probably the scariest thing that I did. But as a doctor, you're kind of used to that world where you just do everything you possibly can to get people results in, in the medical. And so I kind of, I took that over into the marketing and so they started asking me and then, you know, people started uh, doing the marketing. And then I would see, wow, they can, we can get people to a talk, but maybe the doctor's not the best at communicating this to be able to get people, um, you know, excited about it and understanding, you know, ready to make a decision on uh, improving their life, right? Um, doctors get uh, too doctory right? So what they, they spout out all this science and they don't really connect with the patients and uh, people that are looking for this and they'll, you know, typically end up, you know, somewhere else. And so we realized, okay, now we got to start helping docs with that. So we'd help them with their seminars and then we'd help them with their consultations. And as more and more information came out from the FDA, one of the big things that we're always on top on of is, you know, what, what's the most compliant way to do this, right? We want to make sure that uh, we're doing this the way the medical boards want. We're doing this the way the FDA wants. We're not, you know, making claims because there's some people out there making some crazy claims with this stuff. And it's just, it's ridiculous. But uh, that's one of the big things that we bring to our clients is uh, that compliance factor of, yeah. you know, we... <clears throat> It, we're also all the trial and error of going to the, like you mentioned before, like going to the different labs, like that alone is invaluable to say, Hey, I've gone to these, you know, 20 labs and these are the three we recommend based on me actually, you know, opening each door in their office to see what's going on. Absolutely. You know? And uh, no one's done it. No one wants to take the time to do it. They don't want to spend the money to travel the time off work. Uh, it's, so it's, it's hard getting docs to go out to labs. So that's, you know, one of the things that obviously that we bring and we actually in our seminars, we'll bring in compliance folks to talk about compliance. Uh, we just had a seminar and one of the guys who spoke had just gotten back from the world stem cell summit. Mm. And so he brings back, okay, here's what the FDA is looking for. Here's what they want you to say. Here's what they don't want you to say. We want to make sure that we're doing it the way that, that they want and the way that they're setting up the guidelines, because uh, obviously in everything we do, we want to be, uh, be compliant and, you know, not be the, the ones out there acting like there's some kind of magic potion, but really just telling the true facts about this thing, what it's doing 
uh, and you know, not making claims that we're curing diseases everywhere because that's not, that's not what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So you start taking on clients, right? So what does that look like now? Because you still, you know, you have a clinic side and then you, you know, you have this demand because you help people grow their, their office and clinics. What does that look like for um, a client who, or an, uh, an office that wants to, to bring you on? Yeah, typically. So really what we've done is we've, we've built out a team and again, built out all the, the processes uh, that we use uh, to, to get a doc on board. And basically, it starts with an interview process to see if we're a good fit. Uh, my brother, who's also a chiropractor and has been in this world a lot uh, as well, uh, will talk to the docs to see if, you know, what we do uh, would fit them uh, or if, you know, we should recommend someone else just depending on where they are at, they're at. And then we have a whole onboarding system. We find out about their office, what they're doing, what they're looking to promote. Uh, you know, are they wanting to do seminars? How many seminars? And just really figuring out where they are and, uh, you know, what, uh, mm -hmm. what kind of services they're looking for. And then after that, we, we get the information we need and we are what people call a done for you service. And so literally they say, you know, I want to do a talk four weeks from now. Okay. Let's get the location, the time, da, da, da. We build out the whole campaign. Uh, we, you know, drive all the traffic to, let's say, a landing page. Uh, and then we actually do all the follow-up when people RSVP for the seminar. We're actually calling them, texting them, you know, just confirming with them. Because that's one of the things that it's hard in a doctor's office for your staff to peel away and take an hour, you know, uh, just a solid hour or two to do all these calls and RSVPs and things. They don't want to do it. Uh, they're working with patients there. They're doing things, other things that are important. So, you know, it's really easy for docs to come on because we basically do everything. You just have to show up and do the seminar uh, is all it is. And then, you know, if someone's like, hey, I, I don't really know how to do this thing, we've got a 12-week implementation workshop we can take them through to get them going, right? To get them up to speed so that they're ready to uh, do this, do their first seminar, uh, so that it, it just makes uh, sense with them working with us. So um, we want to make sure they know exactly what to do. And then we provide the tools. So think of it this way. There's the old story of you can, you know, feed a man with fish, right? Or you can teach him how to fish. We actually do both. We'll teach you how to fish, but we can also give you the fish too. So it's like the best of both worlds when we, you know, with whether it's the implementation workshops, the implementation program, or the done for you marketing, we just bring you in where you are and make sure you have the tools in your tool bag to uh, help as many people as you want to. And that's what it all comes down to. I think that, you know, people look at it, they're like, oh, it's marketing. Oh, it's this. And it's like, you know, I mean, do hospitals do marketing? You know, do cancer centers do marketing? Absolutely. Anyone out there who wants to help people and change lives, they're pushing their message out there. And that's what we're doing. And so, you know, I unashamedly, I love stem yeah. cells and I talk about them like crazy all over the place. And so I like regenerative medicine. I talk about it everywhere and I'm going to keep talking about it as long as I can. You mentioned the events. Um, why do people come to the events? They come for a couple things. So uh, the compliance I just mentioned is a big thing. Coming to learn what's the latest thing. Everyone wants to make sure they're in compliance. A lot of times it's, you know, they don't want to go in and read all the FDA rules and see this and try to interpret it. So we bring the experts in so they don't have to do that. So they can just, okay, all right, this is what it's saying and they'll go through. So compliance is a big part. Uh, learning a presentation, learning how to communicate this in the right way, in a compliant way, but also in an effective way so that people uh, get the message, right? Uh, they want to learn, they, they bring their staff so their staff can see how this whole system works. Like, how do you run a seminar, right? How do you, uh, you know, bring someone in for a consultation? Uh, we help them with resources, right? You know, what, what kind of lab should you use? Um, is there financing available for docs, uh, for, for their patients? And so we're, Answering their most pressing questions. Most pressing questions and then also that accountability, right? We're there. Most docs afterwards are like, okay, 
let's do this. Let's do an implementation plan because they, they want that accountability so that uh, we help them reach their goals. And that's, that kind of came out of uh, this thing that I did where I, I sent a, uh, an email out to some of my best friends. And I, I think uh, I may have sent you one, Jeremy, just people who know me well. Uh, and this was maybe five to seven years ago. And I said, what do you would say is my superpower, the thing I do best? And eight out of 10 said, you just do, you just work, you just implement, you just get stuff done. And so, you know, I've kind of taken that as my MO and then I help other people do that because that's where I see a lot of the breakdown is someone will come to a seminar, they'll learn all this stuff, then they go back and keep doing the same old stuff. They never implement it, right? And sometimes that can just be from overwhelm, getting too much information. I help people prioritize and implement after the workshop. That's that's really what I, you know, really pride what we do on is being able to help docs get real results by holding them accountable that way. So why did you start this podcast? So one of the things that I realized in this business, when I would start to talk to labs, I would talk to one and they'd say, we're the best. And here's why. And I don't want to say anything bad about those other labs, but blah, 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 blah. And they would say it, right? Go to the next lab. Same thing. Go to the next lab. Same thing. Go to, and everyone's saying they're working with the FDA. Everyone's saying, and I'm like, how do I tell which way is up in this industry? You know, I I need the truth. And of course, that's why I started going to visiting labs. That's why I wanted to see the FDA paperwork, so on and so forth. But what I wanted to do was I, I like listening to podcasts that will bring people on from any side of the spectrum, right? Could be conflicting views. And so everyone can see what everyone's saying. And I wanted a podcast where we've got the top minds in the field that don't necessarily agree with each other, right? That one may say you should use cord blood. One says you should use the tissue. One says you should use exosomes. One says this is the best place or you should only do autologous. Like I I want to get the top minds in this so that people can see what everyone is saying and that there's transparency in this world. I want people to see the transparency in stem cells as I've come to find it by talking with the top people and hearing what they have to say, and then they can make their own decision based on their compilation of the information. So, Dr. Scott, I I just want to mention really quickly, people can check out gmedigital.com and learn more. They could check out more podcast episodes. Um, What else would be important about your journey? Is there anything that we missed in this regenerative medicine journey that we should definitely talk about? You know, I think that just sharing from a personal point of view of where, where I started with my chiropractic business to now having, you know, over 10 regenerative centers um, and helping docs with marketing and everything. Um, a guy spoke something into me, a guy named Vinny Fisher, uh, October of 2015. And he said, Scott, you're never going to grow your business if you're not okay with a 70% version of yourself. And what he meant by that is that many times as a business owner, we will, we're trying to find a replica of ourselves, people that care just as much as emotionally, as deeply as we do in the business and will be, do everything perfect, right? And it's a big mistake we do as business owners where we'll hire someone And in three days, we want them to be performing like we are. And we've taken 15 years to get here. And it sounds ridiculous, but if you're a business owner, you know, you've done it right. You know, that's like, why can't they get this? It's been three days, you know, I mean, it's insane. We're crazy. We're crazy people. So I started to realize that I had to step back. And then that's when I realized Scott, you've got to get someone else to adjust the patients. That's when I stopped seeing patients. I literally went home after I heard that from him and I told my staff, I'm not going to see patients anymore. And 
it took me about two months to get out of that. So that I could really focus on building the regenerative side is what I started doing as well as, you know, overseeing the chiropractic side. And eventually I sold the chiropractic business because at that point I had the chiropractic business, the marketing business and the regenerative, and it was just too much. And I didn't, you know, I want to make sure I was doing stuff right and doing it well. And so, um, you know, that was a big part of my journey. And then out of that, making the decision to take a risk to move to Florida, right? I never would have all of these offices if I stayed in Ohio. I never would have said, hey, I want to start more offices, found this team that did this. And then the, the group I'm working with out, uh, out West, uh, our company, Cellspark, uh, they would have never approached me if I hadn't done what I did in Florida. So it was that stepping out in faith that and being okay with another team getting good people to run your business trusting them giving them the tools to be able to grow your practice and so uh you know that that was it it was it was the making risky decisions that they were calculated i'm not saying being reckless right don't be reckless in business but um, if you build the team and you build the systems and, uh, you know, I was real, you know, how do I run this from afar? And I, I, I talked to you a lot about this, Jamie was how do I run it? Like, like a scrum agile scrum project manager doing daily huddles, I mean, all these different things that we put in place so that this thing would run right. And, uh, you know, just it's fun. I always tell people I like my favorite toy when I was younger was building with Legos. And now I just like to build businesses and build teams. And I just like to build and create and do things that help people. And so my, my ultimate goal is to help doctors get freedom from their practice like I have. Most doctors are slaves to their practice. They can't get out of it. They can't um, spend the time with their family that they want. They can't, um, anyway, just live the, the life that they want. I want to help them do that. I want to help them help more people. And by doing that, we help the end user. Uh, and so, you know, I only do marketing and help docs with uh, services that I believe in. Mm -hmm. So I won't just help anyone market anything. Uh, we're very specific about what we do. I have to believe in the product. I have to know who that doctor is and what they're promoting uh, to make sure that, that we do it uh, because it's, you know, that, that's our reputation and that's, you know, my end goal is, uh, you know, could I help a billion people in my lifetime? I think I might be able to through all these doctors and then all those patients and then all those patients refer people and, um, it's got a cascade effect, cascade effect, you know, and I'm, I'm talking with a group right now about setting up, uh, uh, the, a marketing company in Asia, uh, with them that would duplicate what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we know the population over there and, uh, you know, maybe we'll be able to hit that billion people mark, you know, like the, uh, billion hamburgers with McDonald's. I want to, I want to help a billion people with, uh, with great, great treatments. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I think, um, what I wanted to finish on, I know you're a huge proponent for coaching, mentoring, and you mentioned Kent Calder, you mentioned Vinnie Fisher. Are there any other coaches or mentors that have been influential? Uh, yeah, two big ones. So uh, first one, a guy named Randy Davis, who is, uh, uh, look up Randy Davis. He's going to start a new group called Wham! Walk Away Millionaire. He's calling it Wham! It's a really cool thing. But Randy, look him up. He's got a great, uh, he's got a great uh, past and history. He's done some amazing things. But uh, I'll just share one thing with Randy is uh, when I was thinking about all the things with the chiropractic practice, I had a really bad day and uh, I happened to have a call with Randy and I was just kind of venting to him uh, as I was dealing with some issues with hiring staff and that kind of thing. And Randy talked me through all of it, kind of talked me, um, cooled me down a little bit. I said, Scott, just think about it. I'm going to think about some more things. I'm going to send you an email. 
uh, just kind of my thoughts on this. And so he sends me an email the next morning. A uh, lot of great things to think about in the email. And at the very bottom of it, it said in bold, it said, Scott, if money didn't matter, if you had, you know, bank account didn't matter, uh, would you keep the chiropractic practice? And it didn't even take me a full second to say no, because I realized that it was draining my energy. It was making me miserable. It was taken away from my energy that I could use to really push into the regenerative side. And that's when I decided to go all in. And just like I went to that seminar and came home and said, I'm not seeing patients anymore. I got that email and I called my wife and told her, I said, I think I need to sell the chiropractic portion. And I met with my associate doctor who had been with me for a few years the next uh, Monday morning and offered the practice to him and he agreed to buy it. And that's how that happened. So again, this is my track record of implementation. I learn something and I just do it. When I feel that it's the right thing to do, I just do it. Uh, and Randy was just the catalyst, right? Vinny was the catalyst for me to step out of practice. Randy was the catalyst to, uh, you know, sell the chiropractic practice. And they, they both have meant so much more to me than that. But those are the, the first two. Mm-hmm. The last is uh, a guy by the name of Dan Cushell. Um, look up Dan. He's got a great podcast, uh, Growth to Freedom. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just amazing. A lot of great guests on there. And uh, Dan, his company is called Breakthrough 3X. Uh, he's helped me build my marketing company and build systems in uh, to really get my team on track. Dan, Dan's built very large companies before, so he knows about hiring, he knows about systems, and he's been instrumental in helping get my marketing to a point where it runs kind of like that hamburger university system. Like we literally have a university to train our employees and we have this thing set up so that we can train people to do the job right and we have our systems in place. And so uh, he's just really helped me to, on the business aspect, the day-to-day, uh, he's really helped change that for me. And that's where real growth and scaling can happen because he's helped me to put this together, which helped me simplify my business. And you can only scale if it's simple, right? You can't scale complexity. So uh, he's really helped me to do that. And that's what's helped us to push into the growth um, that, that we've moved into and uh, with the events and everything. Because he used to, you know, be very involved with the Genius Network, Joe Polish's events. Um, and uh, the guy knows the event industry like no one else. And he's, he's helped me to do that uh, at a high level. So those three guys are probably, not probably, those three guys are the most influential on me as far as, uh, you know, guys that I, I travel to see them four times a year, uh, Randy and Vinny, and then Dan, I talk to every single week. Uh, so, and, and he actually comes to our events. And so we're very, very involved. And, um, you know, I, I value um, those three guys so much. And they, I, I give a lot of credit to them with what uh, our companies have been able to accomplish. Dr. Scott, thank you. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and your breakthroughs because I know those are going to make a difference in, in many people's lives if they just listen to this. So you're getting message out to even more people and everyone should go check out gmedigital.com. That's great marketing enterprises. See what events they have. See, you know, check out more podcasts and you know, some of the services they provide. So thanks for having me. Great. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate it. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.